Welcome to the lecture about heat pumps and air conditioners. In this lecture I will explain how heat pumps and air conditioners work and how they can be applied in buildings. The lecture focuses on the most commonly used type of heat pump, which is a compression heat pump. When the weather is cold and the inside of a building needs to be warm, you can burn fuels or biomass to produce heat. However, when the weather is warm and the inside of a building needs to be cool, you need something else. A device which you probably all know is an air conditioner. This is a device that cools down buildings while discarding the heat to the outside. In fact, the air conditioner transports heat from a cold room to the warmer outside air by adding a little bit of electricity. The same happens in a household refrigerator. Heat is extracted from the inside of the refrigerator and is disposed at the back of the fridge. Both air conditioners and refrigerators work with the heat pump principle. In the examples of the air conditioner and the refrigerator, the cooling function is of the device is used and the heat is disposed. But the same principle can be used for heating purposes by using free heat from the environment, such as air. So, a heat pump is a device that transports heat from a colder body to a warmer body by adding a little bit of high quality energy, such as electricity. How does this work? Because, as we know, heat does not flow spontaneously from a cooler to a warmer body. Therefore, a special working medium, also called refrigerant, is needed to transfer the heat from the colder to the warmer body. The refrigerant or work working medium undergoes a cycle from liquid phase to gas phase to liquid, etc. To be able to transfer the heat from the cold to the warm side, a heat pump has four main components. Evaporator, compressor, condenser and expansion device. The evaporator is a heat exchanger where heat is transferred from the cold body to the refrigerant. This means the refrigerant must be colder than the cold body, which means cooling of the cold side takes place. The heat exchanger at the cold side is called the evaporator as the working medium is converted from liquid phase to gas phase as a result of the heat transfer. In order to further increase the temperature of the refrigerant, which is now a gas, a compressor is used. By compressing the gas, its temperature is increased. The achieved temperature must be higher than the temperature of the hot body in order to be able to transfer the heat. This compression of gas requires the input of electricity. The gas with the increased temperature then passes another heat exchanger where heat is transferred to the hot body. This heat exchanger is called a condenser as the refrigerant returns to a liquid phase as a result of the heat transfer. The last component is an expansion valve, which is needed to further lower the temperature of the refrigerant to a temperature which is lower than that of the cold body. Then the cycle can run again. Now we will talk about the heat pump performance. The heat pump performance is referred to as the COP, the coefficient of performance. In the coefficient of performance, the free environmental heat or cold used is not included. Only the amount of electricity needed is considered. This means the COP for heating is defined as the heat output divided by the electricity input and the COP for cooling is defined as the cooling achieved divided by the electricity input. Please note that COPs are usually higher than 100%. This performance being higher than 100% is possible since the free environmental heat is not included in the equation. The achievable heat pump COP depends on the temperatures of the cold side and the warm side. The theoretical maximum COP, which is called the COP Carnot, can be calculated based on the temperatures. The maximum COP for heating is determined by dividing the high temperature by the delta T. And the maximum COP for cooling is determined by dividing the temperature of the cold side by the delta T. Please take a moment to look at the equations and please note that the Kelvin scale must be used for the temperatures. This theoretical maximum COP cannot be achieved in reality. In reality, COPs between 40% and 60% of the maximum value are usually achievable. As can be seen in this figure, this results in commonly achievable COPs between 2 and 6, depending on the temperature lift required between the cold side and the warm side. 
As can also be seen from this figure, it is very favorable to minimize the temperature lift needed. To achieve this, we aim for low temperature heating and high temperature cooling, for example, by using floor heating or low temperature radiators and by finding sources with a favorable temperature, which brings us to the next topic. Potential sources for a heat pump. Various sources can be found, which can be used as a source for a heat pump. The most commonly used source is outdoor air. Heat exchange with the outdoor air is achieved by using an outdoor unit with a fan. Other potential sources include heat from the ground, from exhaust air or from solar thermal panels. As the temperature of the sources differs, also the performance of the heat pump varies with the selected source. Depending on the source, also two main types of heat pumps can be distinguished. Air and water heat pumps and water water heat pumps, having air or water as a source. Now I will show you some examples of what heat pumps look like in practice. The heat pump we all know is the refrigerator. In this figure you can see where in this device the evaporator, compressor, condenser and expansion valve can be found. Also in an air conditioner split unit these components can be identified, although the most visible parts are the condenser and the evaporator. This figure shows a household heat pump, which has a larger compressor than a refrigerator, since more power is needed. For larger multifamily or non-residential buildings, large heat pumps can be built. These can even have multiple compressors, as you can see on the left. Summarizing this lecture, you have learned what a heat pump is, how a heat pump works, how the performance of a heat pump is defined, how to calculate it and finally, what to keep in mind when designing for efficient heat supply.